Hi, my name is Don and I'm going to take you on a tour through my observatory. I've made a previous video on the construction in time-lapse format of this video that's available on my channel. The observatory itself is situated 30 kilometres from Bathurst in New South Wales in Australia. It sits at an elevation of 930 metres on top of a ridge. We have Bortle II class guys here which makes it ideal for astrophotography and especially one shot colour. These ants have just taken over my observatory. I uh, keep vacuuming them up and I keep taking them away, releasing them far away and they manage to find their way back and I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Uh, anyway, uh, let's start with uh, the floor of the observatory. Um, I have these large rubber mats that I've purchased. They're like a cushioned kind of rubber. The observatory floor is all stone, so this stops me from dropping anything and breaking it. Um, as you can see, the pier is separated from the stone floor um, for obvious reasons. One is to stop vibration so that any vibration that walking around on the floor doesn't uh, make its way to the pier and up the telescope. It goes about 800 millimetres into the ground and between, and then it's uh, good day fella, how are you mate? And uh, it's separated by 100 millimetres of sand roughly and uh, the stone floor is on top of that. So mounted on the pier of my observatory, uh, I have a mini PC there. It's to keep everything as close to the telescope um, as I can. Reason for that is previously I had a laptop that uh, was situated over there where uh, my control position is. But uh, even USB 3, um, with that length, I think it was about 6 metres, was not cutting it, especially to drive two cameras, a guide camera and the imaging camera, and I kept getting dropouts all the time. So I eliminated that by moving, buying a little PC and mounting it directly to the telescope pier, which shortened everything, and I've never had dropouts since, so if anyone's getting similar problems, that could be an easy solution for you. As far as communications, um, I operate the telescope inside once I'm up and running in the comfort of my house. I have a power line over there, an adapter, that uh, I have one on this end and one at the end of my PC in the house, and I can control the telescope directly from there. Uh, this is where I do my acquisitioning process. Um, I do all my setup routines for the night, focusing, uh, guiding, guiding calibration, uh, collimation, uh, rotation of the camera. My first test image is trying to make sure that everything is lined up and orientated the way I want it. Once I'm up and running, I generally disappear into the house and control the telescope from there. Um, I have two screens. I used to have a laptop here and was battling the fact that there's so many different palettes open on, on the acquisitioning software like PHD2 Guarding and Signals Generator Pro and other stuff. And jumping between windows was always a bit of a pain. Having the two monitors, you can spread all your pallets across both monitors and it just, I felt, made it a lot easier. I can also uh, pull down the blinds on both of these uh, once I'm done and inside and it eliminates a lot of light. Uh, the roof of the observatory is a, is a flat top design. It's manually operated. I don't have motors to control it. I'd like to one day. Um, That'll be another video and another learning curve for me. 
The hatch uh, simply opens up from inside. I won't pull it all the way. You would have seen it in operation at the start of the video. The hatch actually extends past the Xanus, so it allows me to shoot vertically, uh, which is great. Um, about, uh, there was a couple of questions that people had regarding being a flat top roof, does water get in? Only when it's a really strong storm and high winds and only a little bit of water gets in. A bit of water gets in around the front here, but there's nothing really to, um, to affect it there. As far as the shutter over the telescope goes, um, I have a big barbecue cover, which is a vinyl barbecue cover, which covers the telescope anyway. So for the small amount of water that gets in, because there's such a generous amount of flashing over the top and there's high sides, underneath when it's closed it's difficult for the water to penetrate and when it does it's only bits of splashing so overall it's pretty good i have more problem from condensation than i do with uh, water getting in from rain i started with an interest in astrophotography and astronomy in my mid-20s that's when i bought my first australian sky and telescope magazines i was always fascinated just the fact that you could take images of celestial objects, it was mind blowing to me. I never really had the money or the time to do it uh, for many, many years, although it was always on my mind. I started building this observatory in 2019. I was saving to, to buy this particular telescope, which I'd done a lot of research on, and I knew this is the telescope I wanted to buy of countless uh, YouTube videos and reading up. Um, it just fitted everything I wanted to do. Um, the fact that I can get three different focal lengths out of this telescope uh, was, was a game changer. I visited the observatory in 2020 in March, mainly over weekends as I work full time. The pandemic also reared its ugly head around February. That made me panic by a little bit because uh, supply chains all around the country were disappearing with stock. So I got the old credit card out and went for it. In hindsight, it was a great idea. It fast-tracked the observatory also, and it fast-tracked me into astrophotography. I built the observatory uh, from stone that I had on the property, and I built it out of steel. It's a three meter diameter observatory. I was looking at uh, plastic and fiberglass observatories that are three metres as well and they were just hideously expensive and I couldn't justify the, the price. This observatory cost me roughly about 3000 could have been a little less or maybe a few hundred dollars more but it was around about that ballpark figure. Uh, also having been built out of stone and steel it makes it very resistant to fire we're in a high fire danger area perched right at the top of a ridge and we're surrounded by bush i just don't know how a fiberglass or plastic dome would fare in those kind of conditions this pretty much sums up the tour uh, thanks guys for watching i do apologize for the quality of the video this video was shot on my phone i know that's really bad right um, I hope to get a, a decent uh, video camera in the future and I do wish to do more videos. I also uh, I want to thank all those other people who have done videos on the construction of their observatories and tours on their observatories because I found it really invaluable for me when I was constructing my observatory and designing my observatory. It really helped me and gave me a lot of ideas. Um, thanks again for watching and I hope Someone got something out of this today.